We've made the 500 mile drive from San Antonio to El Paso, Texas, literally dozens of times. It is my wife's hometown, and you'd be hard pressed to find a year when we didn't make this trip. Recently, my wife's job had planned to fly her out to El Paso for a few days, and with the kids being out of school for the summer, I figured this would be a great opportunity to head that way and meet her there for a little family gathering. So once again, my two daughters, Jasmine and Brooke, and I will be making the long journey to El Paso, although this one will be a slight deviation from the previous. The drive is usually a simple one, with Interstate 10 providing a direct route between these two cities. Having set up my used military trailer, the M1102, for overlanding with the Smittybilt Gen 2 rooftop tent mounted on top, and with the 2020 Ram Power Wagon to pull it, my wanderlust and knowledge of the geography of these areas couldn't help but creep in, and I have decided to turn this normally mundane and uneventful drive into a slightly unpredictable overlanding adventure. I usually make these trips on my own or with a friend, so this will be the first time doing it with just me and my two daughters. We've had the entire family out on camping trips before, but this will be a true test of whether just the three of us will be able to handle camping alone for a few nights on the road. It's actually broken. It's just like cleaning itself. They say that it's I think the employees just don't want to make your food. Somebody made an app that showed you which McDonald's in the country's the actual machine was broken. M1102 is loaded. Leaving Dairy Queen in Junction, Texas. Not sure we're gonna make it there. Five hours and four minutes says we'll get there at 105. Well, we're gonna get there at one in the morning? Yep. Hey! Hey, that's when you go to bed anyway, isn't it? Yeah. This looks familiar. This is when I, uh, started my first Big Ben video. We continue to make our way westbound on Interstate 10 towards the Davis Mountains. The plan was to camp at a little known roadside camp called the Madera Canyon Dispersed Camping Area. To get there, you take Texas Highway 118 South, just west of the junction with Interstate 20. Then just a couple miles before the turnoff for the McDonald Observatory, you will see a side road with a sign that says, Lawrence E. Wood Picnic Area. This is a free roadside camping area that includes five different primitive sites that are nicely separated. With this being a free site with no reservations required, I was a little worried that there might not be a site available and we might be forced to find an alternative option. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if there is a spot here. And then we're gonna have to like go to Fort Davis picnic table. <laughs> it's like a trailhead. Well, good morning, guys. We're at this really cool little roadside picnic area that uh, you're allowed to camp at. It's a free site, at least as far as I know, it's free. And it's beautiful. It's up here in the uh, Davis Mountains. Uh, it's about 28 miles south of I-10, not far from the I-10, I-20 junction. And it's a great place to just, there's like five different uh, spots here and they're pretty big. Good for uh, pulling over and catching some Zs. It's real quiet. You can see this is our, where we decided to stay. This is probably the biggest site. It's kind of halfway on this uh, little loop road that spurs from the uh, Texas Route 118. This car pulled in. We were already here pretty late. We got here past uh, 1, 1 1.30. And by the time we set up and went to bed, it was already 2. And this, this car pulls in at like 4.30. I'm like, who pulls in at campsite at 4.30? I guess he just needed to get some rest. See, that's uh, the main road, 118. Got a really nice picnic table here. Trash can. <laughs> what a mess. Dad, look clean. I don't know what I'm going to put it in. Mm. 
No, this is not cool. What's so funny, bird? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's oh, don't tell me I don't have a spatula. Breakfast of champions. Yeah. They can carry like 10 times their own weight. Or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> as beautiful as this campsite was, in the words of my dad, it was time for us to head them up and move them out. We descended our way back down the Davis Mountains and continued west on I-10. Not knowing exactly where the camp for the second night would be, the general idea was to camp somewhere in southeast New Mexico, preferably at a higher elevation. When we reached the town of Van Horn, Texas, we headed north and passed by the highest point in Texas, which is called Guadalupe Peak. Seen here is actually a peak called El Capitan, which lies just to the south of Guadalupe Peak and blocks the view of it from this vantage point. After stopping to take some pics, we worked our way into New Mexico and towards the city of Carlsbad. Just picked up some much needed supplies here at the Walmart in Carlsbad. Kids want to have s'mores tonight. I had thought about exploring the forest roads that lie just to the southwest of Carlsbad in the northern fringe of the Guadalupe Mountains, but instead decided to head more north and west towards the Sacramento Mountains and the town of Cloudcroft, New Mexico. This seemed to be a surer shot that we'd find some cooler weather for camping. Well, we just had a little, our first little rain shower uh, heading towards Cloudcroft. Kind of got everything wet in the back. Your photobombing foot. Hopefully the fridge is all right with this rain. As we gained elevation heading into the Sacramento Mountains, the landscape became much more forested and wet. Okay, I've seen lots of signs that say the forest is closed, but that the towns are open. Extreme fire danger, despite all this rain they've had, despite the county we're in, Otero County, being in a flood morning. It can't be serious. Anyway, we're driving on this forest road here. Um, there was nothing that physically blocked it.
so wet. Everything's gonna be muddy. <laughs> Okay, so I think we found a decent spot to camp. We gotta kind of clean up this fire ring. We got this uh, nice tree. Hello. The only thing is there's a lot of cow patties. So they definitely graze out here. Map doesn't show any private land, so I guess they're, they get to graze by permission of the National Forest Service. With everything so wet, we had to improvise. <laughs> I want help. Can you fill this up, uh, like that line with water? Okay. Sure. Whoa, whoa, I'm collapsing it. Shoot. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, here we go. Oh, shoot, it's overflowing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we gotta drain it anyway. Come up. Push the bottom part down. There, jeez, that's the one downside to these. Yeah, let it, it'll burn all the way off. Just leave it in there. It'll burn all the char off. You want the toilet again? Yeah. <whistles> Smoke's blowing right towards the cooking area. Nice. Hi, Brooke. Good morning. Where are we? The forest. The forest. In New Mexico. The forest in New Mexico. Beautiful morning. Little chilly, little damp. It's still pretty. <laughs> Let there be fire. We may have a pretty time getting out of here. Uh, uh, yeah. This trail is still extremely muddy. They had a lot of rain just before we got here. It is still clay. Other than a few crickets, that was one of the quietest nights. <laughs> Rivaling uh, Big Bend at night without any wind. Ooh, feels warm right here. Camping? You want a cooking show right here? It is a brook cooking show. Oh, look at that. The bug is stuck in the water. Morning, kiddo. Not good morning? Bad morning? What you doing, Brooke, camera lady? Ooh, girls want some hot chocolate? No. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> At the same time. One, two, three. Yeah, no. We got there, Brooke. Okay, that's a little close. Eggs. Egg beaters. We don't have to crack any eggs open. Get this at Walmart. That's in Mexico. <laughs> so beautiful. Right. Mac and cheese. Slowly. Oh, it's frozen. Uh, Mr. Idiot here forgot to open the valve on the propane tank. 
I guess I will eat this big giant thingy mabob. Look at this. Oh my, what in darnation is that? Got Brooke the pancake maker here, making us some awesome pancakes. Thank you, Brooke. We don't have a spatula, so we have to improvise. Jasmine, that is not an ax. Well, that's enough of the shenanigans. It's time to pack up this camp because we still have quite a drive ahead of us that will include going through some pretty thick mud. Also, in this time lapse, you can see the clouds are building all around us. There is a chance that we could see a pretty good downpour from some early afternoon thunderstorms, which would make the trail conditions that much worse. Couldn't really get up this section. This is extremely muddy and it's like clay. I'm surprised I made it up that. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna try to back out into this. Turn around, hopefully I don't get high centered there. trying to back the trailer into this spot right here so I could turn around and go back down at least we'd have gravity on our side because this is slowly going uphill and goes to a ridge line I, if it's this slippery going up that that could be treacherous but turning around here is turning out to be the same deal so I might just have to back straight down the trail as much as I can back to the campsite After discovering a good turnaround location up ahead, I decided to try out the winch for the first time and get myself past this extremely muddy and rutted section of trail. front wheel turn to the passenger side of the truck because turning it left would cause it to slide further into the rut on the passenger side as the trail is slightly off camber here. It was also in hopes that the passenger side front tire might be able to climb up out of the rut and give me more traction. quite sure what happened here, but the winch began popping out of spool. This happened after several iterations of spooling the line back into where it would have tension and performing another line pull until it would yet again pop out.
Eventually, I was able to free myself after a combination of winching and careful throttle application. able to get out of here now that we're going downhill. I sure hope so. Yeah, here's where we tried to turn around. with all these storms and uh, that way was going uphill and there was like a switchback uh -uh. I got my kids in the car and I really think it would have been even more hairy had I kept going further uh, these, these roads are just extremely slick oh boy look at this boy. Man, I hey. wonder we had trouble going up that Should have stayed up. Not as much. It's, we got gravity on our side. Oh, everything's going everywhere. Car's gonna flip over. No, it's not. Because I've been doing this a long time, kiddo. Shortly after we hit pavement, we aired up the tires and made the rest of the two-hour drive to our final destination of El Paso, Texas. I hope you enjoyed this film. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of the next motoring adventure.